gorgeous day from baseball at Graves Field on the campus of the University of Washington. That's where we are today. Prime Sports presents Pac-10 Baseball, the Oregon State Beavers, and the Huskies of the University of Washington. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Dave Haverlo. We've got two schools headed in opposite directions right now in the Pac-10 Northern Division. The Huskies have won five in a row. This Oregon State team uh, has dropped five in a row, and, and it shows in the standings. Well, Pat Casey, new head coach at Oregon State, not used to being in that position. If you're a Beavers fan, generally the Beavers aren't down there, so they're going to try to salvage something the last game of this doubleheader. Kenny Knutson and the Huskies, they're used to being up on top. Yeah, that's the ironic thing about Oregon State. They won the conference championship last year, but that was Jack Riley who was right. the head coach. He ended 22 years at Oregon State. Tough for Pat Casey to reload. He lost almost the entire starting rotation and the heart and soul of last year's team, A.J. Marquardt. And if the Beavers are going to make a run, these two guys got to get it going. That's Kevin Hooker and Pat Mywis. Well, these two ball players, Myrus and Hooker, very identical statistically. Same amount of doubles for both guys, same amount of home runs. You can put a blanket over both of them and just kind of roll the dice to see what you got. Yeah, what you have for this Washington team is an outstanding pitching staff. They have won seven of their last 10 ball games, and the batting average against is about 190. But if you're going to have good pitching, you've got to have good defense. And Ken Knudsen feels he has it on the left side of his infield. He's made some changes there, and this is what he's come up with. A freshman at third in Ryan Souls, and then Ross Junkin, his best defensive player at short. Well, Souls has started about eight or nine ball games consecutive or for the Huskies at third base, which is good. He's going to get very comfortable over there. If he has any problems as a freshman, he's got Junk and the senior just to his left, and Ross will move him around and make sure he's playing the hitters where he's supposed to. All right, our pitching matchup today. We have a pair of left-handers, but that's where the similarities end with these two guys because Sean Spencer for Washington is the ace of this squad. Stosh Jackson's usually in the bullpen, and it's an emergency start for him. Pat Casey's hoping just to get three or four solid innings out of him. Well, it's pitched by committee. You've got Jackson making his eighth appearance on the year. Who knows what's going to happen with the young freshman again. Maybe he can come out and throw strikes and get some good defense behind him. You've got the ace for the Huskies and Spencer out there, so it's a real mismatch, I think, right now on paper, but there's a lot of baseball yet to be played before it's decided. And Spencer's a guy that can help himself out at the plate. Last wow. week, he beat Washington State and hit his seventh home run of the season. Yesterday, these two teams met doubleheader sweep by Washington and that means that Brett Merrick was probably busy he was he got two saves he now has 30 and the left-handed reliever is now the career leader in saves in the Pac-10 conference our Eric Radovich is with the lefty closer thanks Rich well we have the chance here to talk to a all-american Husky stopper closer Brett Merrick he's got uh, 20 saves last year to earn the All-American status and how have you dealt with some of the high pressure and expectations coming into this season? Well, I think I, uh, I pitch a lot better under pressure and uh, have a lot more fun when the game's online and the base is loaded and and uh, I get the ball and they need me to do my job. Um, it's been a little bit different last year. It's, you know, the teams around the league know who I am and, and know my pitching and, and this year they're starting to, you know, they're all over me, they're ragging me, calling me, you know, ooh, it's Merrick pitching on the mound and call me All-American and just kind of like trying to get to me that way. But I think um, I just have to deal with it and, and pitch my game. This year, the team started off kind of slowly, but uh, suddenly you've got eight saves here in the conference season, nine on the year, and you've become the all-time Pac-10 saves leader. Uh, team really in a groove now. The team's playing well. I think our defense has improved just 100%. Um, earlier in the year in preseason, we were, you know, everyone in the diet was holding their breath on a ground ball, you know, to the infielders. But right now we're... Uh, our, you know we're making the routine plays and and we're making outs and and I'm I'm getting more save opportunities and and getting a chance to, and getting a chance to pitch. Perfect. Thanks, guys, and uh, back to you guys. Dave, sometimes college baseball coaches hold their breath when they go to the bullpen, but not with Mr. Merrick. Hey, give him the ball. If you got a guy like him, he'll challenge the hitters. He won't beat himself. He's All a dandy. Right. All right, Oregon State trying to turn things around, maybe playing the spoiler role this year in the Pac-10 North. Washington has a one-game lead in the Pac-10 North they'd like to keep it. Great day of baseball here on the campus of the University of Washington. The Beavers of Oregon State, the Huskies of Washington, it's next on Prime Sports. Final game of this weekend three game series the Huskies have won the first two the Oregon State Beavers and the Huskies in game three defensively for the Huskies 
Out in left field, Brian Lauchs, Joe Trippi's in center, John Vandegreen is out in right, Ryan Soles at third, Ross Junk in the shortstop, Chris Whitemarsh at second, Tim Bishop gets a rare start at first base, Sean Malley is the catcher, and on the mound is Sean Spencer. His numbers are impressive. But the other thing that's impressive about him, Dave Haverlow, is he's the ace, but he doesn't throw till Sunday because Ken Caduza wants his bat in the lineup on Saturday. It's amazing how the rotation just happened to work out. And Kenny Knudsen's got a few real good having his ace go on the staff after the Huskies had defeated Oregon State. Doubleheader win yesterday. You can sweep him with the victory today. Spencer will face this lineup for Oregon State. Scott Harden leads it off. He's in center. Alan Snelling, the designated hitter, hits second. Kevin Hooker's at second base. He threw yesterday eight innings. He'll hit third. Pat Mywis is at third base. Mywis in the cleanup spot. Matt Bailey, the first baseman, he'll hit fifth. Mark Malloy is in right field, hitting sixth. Chris Wakeland in left field in the seven position, hitting eighth, the freshman shortstop, Ryan Light. And David Schmidt will do the catching. Schmidt will hit ninth. Pat Casey in his first year. Of course, he was a player and a great player in the Pac-10 Northern Division at Portland. Back in 79 and 80, he was a first-team All-Pac-10 North pick as an outfielder. He coached seven years at George Fox in Oregon. And he replaces Jack Riley, of course. The series numbers. The Beavers lead the overall series, but the Huskies swept yesterday's ball game. 5-3 and 1-0. And Eric Radovich, those were two very well-played ball games yesterday. It's fun to watch. The Huskies have really uh, started to play some good defense to go along with their good pitching, and that's the way Ken Knudsen likes to play baseball. And it's a gorgeous weekend for this series, which is being played, I might add, and I think this has a bearing on today's game, without two Husky players who played yesterday in the spring football game, Cam Cleland, and lawyer Malloy they can't just play football one day and come out and play baseball the next right the way it's it shapes up they have to uh, sit out the entire weekend you make a roster for the weekend series and Ken's got his 25 active guys and these guys of course uh, players on the football team too you know Malloy all pack 10 and uh, Cleveland shares time at tight end so uh, they had to play in that spring game yesterday. John Spencer getting set to go to work on Scott Harden the senior out of Salem Oregon. And the left-hander delivers a fastball for a strike, and we're underway. It is 0-1. Phil Jordan is our home plate umpire. Walter Palmer at first. Jerry Lemers at third. There are Harden's numbers. He has a home run, 13 RBIs, and quickly the left-hander's out in front, 0-2. Not much of a secret what the pitch selection is going to be for Spencer. Two straight pitches, two straight fastballs ahead, 0-2. That one sails outside, and it's a ball and two strikes. We might add that the wind is breezing a bit in from left field. It's not a bad day to be pitching here at Graves Field. Good breaking ball, check swing, and Harden did not go around. Two balls and two strikes. Good place with a good location with the breaking ball right there. Good stop by Molly behind the plate, knocking that ball down. Look at those numbers right there by Spencer. Just 24 walks in 51 innings. Those are the impressive numbers. Harden stays alive, and it's two balls and two strikes. Spencer is not in the lineup as far as a hitter though because Oregon State has a lefty going on the mound. Stosh Jackson. There's the first strike out of the ball game. Scott Harden looking at a breaking ball from Sean Spencer. There's one down. I'll tell you what Spencer's looking working like he's got a date. He is working quick. Not messing around right there. Unhittable pitch for out number one. Alan Snelling digs in and a fastball is lined in a right field. That's John Vandegreen territory. They make the catch. And there's two outs. Kevin Hooker coming to the plate. Eric, you look at, at a guy like Spencer, and he really is not affected as far as playing a position and then coming in to pitch in another ballgame. For some players, that's a hardship. Yeah, for uh, Spencer though, he's a guy that loves to hit. He doesn't mind hitting even when he's uh, pitching in a ball game. As you mentioned in the pregame, he had a home run in Pullman last weekend against the Cougars while uh, pitching, helping himself out a little bit. And uh, no, it doesn't bother him a bit. He's a fine first baseman. He's the best first baseman that the Huskies have, according to Ken Knudsen, and he's fallen behind Kevin Hooker at two and zero. Hooker's having a good year, three oh four. Another one of the seniors on this Oregon State team. This Beaver team in dropping five in a row has seen their Pac-10 record go from six and five to six and ten. 
fouled at the plate. It's two and two. Eric, let me ask you something. You've seen Spencer pitch an awful lot. Does he generally work this quick when he works a ball game? It's a trademark of the Washington starters uh, as, a, as a whole, and, and Brett Barrick, the closer, also that way. Really quick up on top of the hill to get that ball back. Give me the sign, and here it comes. Two outs were just underway in the top of the first inning. The 2 2 pitch. Wow. Swing and a miss. Quick work indeed. Sean Spencer disposes of the Beavers here at the top of the first. No runs, no hits. Nobody left. We've played half an inning in sunny Seattle. Oregon State nothing. And the Huskies coming to bat. Oregon State failing to score in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first inning. And the defense for Oregon State, which has been a problem this year for Pat Casey and the Beavers. Chris Wakeland's in left field. Scott Harden's out in center. Mark Malloy's in right. Pat Mywis is at third base. Ryan Leip the shortstop. Kevin Hooker at second. Matt Bailey at first. And David Schmidt behind the plate. And on the mound is Stosh Jackson. An emergency starter for Pat Casey's team. Stosh Jackson, he's just a freshman out of Milwaukee, Oregon. He has a 1 0 record as he makes his second start, but he's only gone seven innings this year, so the real question mark is how long can he last? Well, he didn't have enough time to get nervous because we understood that Jeff Tuck was going to start for Oregon State when we came to the ballpark today. But instead, it was kind of pitching by committee. So Jackson's out there. He's featuring what looks like our tailing fastball and a little slurb, little breaking ball. Certainly not overpowering, but the young freshman has got his work cut out for him against his Husky team that's on a roll. And here is that Husky team lineup. Joe Trippy is always leads it off. He's in center field with Lawyer Malloy out, and Malloy's number two spot will be filled by Craig Holmes, who's the DH. John Vandergreen leading in a lot of categories in the Pac-10. He's in right field hitting third. Ross Junk in the shortstop elevated to the cleanup spot. Brian Laux is in left field hitting fifth. Sean Malley will do the catching hitting sixth. Hitting seventh is Tim Bishop. He's at first base. Ryan Soles at third. And Chris Whitemarsh is at second base hitting ninth. There's Kenny Knutes in his third season. He won the conference in 93 last year. Had the best season ever at the University of Washington. Going one game away from the College World Series. Joe Trippy will climb in against Stosh Jackson. Trippy continues a great career here. A 346 average his senior season. The career leader in stolen bases in Washington history. He has 81 now. Stosh Jackson with the strike. And it's 0 and 1. Trippy is a prototype left or leadoff hitter. Left hander, run well. The 0 1 from Jackson is down low. Jackson did pitch yesterday, he finished up in the first game of that doubleheader, but he's only gone seven innings. The 1 1 is down low, and it's two balls and a strike. Well, does Jackson just walk off there a little bit? Seven innings pitched, four walks, five strikeouts. Not too bad. I wonder why he hasn't pitched more innings all this year, Rich. Breaking ball misses outside, and it's three and one. Well, in the seven innings, opponents are only hitting 242 against him. And he misses down low, and that's one thing you don't want to do is walk the leadoff man. Joe Trippy is aboard. It's been about what two months since Trippy's been thrown out trying to steal. He's got 16 in a row. Yeah, he started out uh, six and 12 stealing bases on the year, and since that time has stolen 16 in a row. Didn't get on yesterday. It was 0 for 6 yesterday. Had a couple of sacrifices. Uh, this will be the first time Oregon State's seen him on the bases this weekend. And certainly, it's it, for Trippy. It's probably the first time he has seen Stosh Jackson on the mound as far as his move to first base. And I don't think that was Jackson's best move, but I'll guarantee you, as many times as Trippy's been over there at first base, he's going to stretch that lead out a little bit more and make the freshman out there come with his best move so everybody can see it on the bench. Throw to first. And Trippy's back. Craig Holmes is the batter. Holmes.
Holmes in place of Lawyer Malloy. Malloy, the number two hitter, a guy that's been a, a center fielder and a number two hitter for the Husky team this year. And Holmes chops it up the middle. That might be two. Leip on to second one. Hooker's relay is not in time. And Trippy is erased, and Stoss Jackson gets an out with a ground ball. He'll face a big left-handed bat now in John Vandegrift. And that was a big play right there for the freshman. Jackson led to start the ball game off with a base on balls. That's not what Pat Casey, the head coach of Oregon State, wanted to see. But the left-hander came back, got a ground ball. They got the lead runner for out number one. And that's a big out for this freshman out there on the hill. Kind of surprised to see Holmes uh, swinging early in the count after the walk. Didn't really give Trippy a chance to go from first. It's a good point. And now Holmes is at first base. Vandergreen takes one up and in. One and on. Vandergreen's one of the two batters that Stosh Jackson faced yesterday, and uh, Vandy rooted him rudely with a double right down the right field line. Having a tremendous year at 433, seven homers, 37 RBIs. Fly ball, right center, Harden drifting over. He's there and he makes the catch. It's a difficult sky today here above Graves Field. It's kind of a gray haze that has set in. John just got under that one just a little bit as you see the center field fielder Harden out there. Did a good job of using his glove hand to shade. Keep the sun out of his eyes, bring the ball down for out number two. But John just missed one right there. Rich and Eric with that wind blowing out from center to right. A little bit more of that baseball, and we have a two to nothing ball game. No question about it. A little surprised that uh, the Huskies haven't tried to run up to this point, gentlemen. Well, they haven't had that many pitches to get going. As Eric mentioned, Holmes swung on an early pitch in the count. And Vandegreen went after an early pitch. Here's Junkin now with two homers and 31 RBIs. Holmes over there at first base, like most Huskies, uh, can run. He's got three steals in six tries. And the Huskies certainly like to run. Washington this year with 64 stolen bases coming into this ballgame. And that's a complete opposite of Oregon State. The Beavers are a rather sedentary team. 13 stolen bases for Oregon State. 1 0 to Junk, and here's Stosh Jackson's pitch, and it's fouled back. I think Junkin was fooled a little bit right there. Jackson got that ball up to the plate a little bit quicker than I think Ross anticipated. Yeah, that was sneaky fast right there. Bottom of the first, no score. Stosh Jackson goes to first, and Craig Holmes is back in. This might be an opportunity for the freshman Stosh Jackson to impress his coach Pat Casey because there are going to be a lot of new faces in Beaver uniforms next year. There's a strike. And it's one and two now to Junkin. There are a lot of seniors on this Oregon State team. And Pat Casey did not really have a full year to recruit for this right. season. Didn't come over, didn't get the job till uh, the first week or so of August, I believe he told us. And by then, a lot of your recruiting done by the uh, by the opposition. Holmes at Back. first, and they've got him picked off. The throw from Bailey is not in time. It's a stolen base from Craig Holmes. Well, tell you, Bailey, the first baseman, did not do a very good job of getting that ball out of his glove, guys. And Holmes, who was picked off immediately, he just sprinted as hard as he could, slid in head first to second base underneath the tag. We'll get a chance to watch it here. There you see Holmes, he's running hard. He never even hesitates, but the throw from the first baseman is just late. And in with the stolen base is Craig Holmes. And now Junkin with a chance to drive in a run and put the first run on the board in the ball game. Two outs in the bottom of the first. Jackson with a breaking ball that's outside. It's two and two. We'll see how the freshman Jackson uh, handles that. You get a guy picked off, you think you're out of the inning, and uh, now he's got to come back to work on a good hitter in Junkin. Tide call. Junkin's an interesting story because last year he was an all pac 10 pick at third base. But as we talked about, Ken Knutson was trying to shuffle his defense on the infield and finally decided, let's just move Junkin to shortstop, and, and he 
has said that Junkin is his best defensive infielder. And things have kind of clicked since then. There's a great breaking ball from the freshman Stosh Jackson. And he comes out and throws the ball very well here in the first inning. No runs, no hits. There were no errors. One man left. We've played one. In Seattle, the Beavers and the Huskies are scoreless. Good crowd on hand. Graves Field in Seattle. The final season of baseball at Graves Field as we know it. A new and improved Graves Field next year on the campus. I think he's directing that at you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, we hope uh, we hope to break some ground here in the offseason. Uh, still waiting to see where the site will be. There's a couple different sites being discussed. Of course, one of them right here in the current location. Pat Myers leads it off. Matt Bailey, Mark Malloy to follow against the lefty Sean Spencer, who throws strike one. And it's 0 and 1. Spencer, two strikeouts in the first inning. And he worked quickly, as he does here in the second. One ball and one strike. Pretty good pitch right there by the left hander Spencer. First pitch fastball in the outside corner, next pitch fastball inside corner. Two different pitches. 1 1 pitch hit hard in the hole. Junkin got a glove on it, but it's in the left field. And a base hit for Pat Myers. That'll bring the first baseman, Matt Bailey, to the plate. It's going to be interesting as we see the base hit right here by Myers past the diving shortstop. Be interesting to see if Oregon State hitters are paying attention and realize who's out there in the mound for the Huskies. I think Spencer's going to come in and throw a strike. Stand up there, boys, and get your hacks in. Don't let him get you behind in the count. A little change up that floats high. It's 1 0. Matt Bailey, the first baseman. He's just a freshman out of Hillsboro. As I mentioned, the Beavers are not a, a running team. Iowa has not even attempted a stolen base this year. Good fastball. It's 1 1. Real good fastball that tailed away from the right handed hitter down to the location. Watch this ball sink on the outside corner. Whoop, right there, right underneath the aluminum. My was back in. Snap throw by the left hander Spencer, as you see. Man over there first, my was straight. Gardening over there. First. A quick snap throw right there. Spencer knows both ends of that. He is not the everyday first baseman, but just about the everyday first baseman for this Washington team, as well as an integral part of the starting rotation. Well, there's a fastball up in the strike zone, it tailed away from the right handed hitter. Spencer doing a good job of mixing his pitches up as far as location. Down in the strike zone, runs a fastball away. See what he comes with right here. Out in front of Bailey, one and two. Stays at one and two. And Bailey was a very, very late on that fastball. Washington coming in first place by a game. The Pac 10 North at 11 and 6. Portland State just a game back. Throw to first, and he almost had Myers leading. Well, Bishop, the first baseman for the Huskies there, he tried to deke the runner. He, he actually squared up and got in a defensive position as if he was expecting the ball to go to the plate, and then Spencer threw back. One two pitch, swing and a miss. Three strikeouts now for Sean Spencer. Fastball up in the strike zone that Bailey wasn't able to catch up with. Mark Malloy now. Three punch outs for Spencer, who had 51 in 51 and two thirds innings coming in. So a strikeout an inning is pretty darn good. You bet it is. In college baseball. You know what alarms me when you look at Spencer? His numbers are so solid, but his earned run average is at 5.23. Malloy hits a drive in a right center field. That's well hit. Trippy and Vandergreen over, and it's going to get in the gap. Milas around third, and Casey will hold him there. 
It's a double for Mark Malloy. Boy, Pat Myers came charging around third base. And at the very last second, Matt Casey put up the stop sign. And I'll tell you what, we're going to get a chance to watch it here as the ball's up in the strike zone right down the middle of the plate. You watch the right fielder, Vandergreen, go over and pick this ball up. As it kind of hits out there and dives, John has to circle back. It's a strong throw back into the infield. And had the ball gotten away from the cutoff, man, that runner right there certainly would have scored. But then Pat Casey puts on the stop sign and diving back safely is Myers for Oregon State. And now the Beavers have a nice opportunity with runners at second and third. Seven doubles now for Malloy. Chris Wakeland, the left fielder, against Spencer. Infield back from the stretch. Outside corner, it's all in one. I think Pat Casey made the right move there, holding the runner at third base with Wakeland coming to the plate, just one down. Of course, uh, they were shut out yesterday, and uh, this is a good opportunity for them to get a run here. Wakeland is one of the top RBI guys for this Beaver team. Two homers, 25 runs batted in. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. He's moved down in the lineup a bit because the left hander's on the mound. I'll tell you what, if he gets a ball, guys that he can pull to the right side, looking where White March is playing and Bishop, they're really playing deep over there. If the hitter right here, Wakefield, can get a ball he can pull, that will certainly score the run at the third. Ball on, a on the ground anywhere but third should score because the, the infield's back and there's a breaking ball for a strike. It's one and two, but getting your bat on the ball against Sean Spencer is, a, is another thing. He throws another breaking ball like that, Eric. He might have his fourth strikeout recorded. One two pitch. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Up. Nice good. good sequence. Here in the second half of the season, that's the Sean Spencer we've seen. He gets in a little bit of trouble and really comes right after a hitter and goes for the strikeout. Likes to take the out himself. This is a fastball up in the zone that followed a pitch. It was a slow breaking ball and you can see right there why Wakeland had such a tough time catching up with it. Now Kenny Knudsen the head coach of the Huskies is going to trot out and talk to his pitcher Spencer and kind of remind him or let him know what the Huskies know about this next hitter Ryan Leip. Well one thing he does know Leip will stand in right handed. But on deck is another left handed hitter and first base is open although it's awful early to start pitching around the number eight hitter. There's Leip's numbers he has not torn the cover off the ball at 179. I think you hit it on the head Rich. Uh, Spencer's had tremendous success against left handed batters and he's letting him know if he falls behind in the count don't feel like you've got to feed Leip here anything fat over the plate you've got a left hander on deck. So there's two outs. Spencer's out in front 0 and 1. Where are the earned runs coming from? I mean, five, 51 and two thirds innings, 53 hits, 51 strikeouts, and only 24 walks. And his batting average against is a minuscule 255, which in college baseball that is minuscule. Well, it's one of those things where it's the it's the one bad outing syndrome, where you get left hung out there for a couple of innings, and a team hit the ball hard. You'll remember during spring break, uh, Nebraska scored 35, New Mexico State scored 25 against this Washington team, and the ERA numbers are a little distorted on the whole club. Oregon State with runners at second and third, two outs here in the second, and Life gets a bat on it, fouls it back, one and two. On deck, the catcher David Schmidt. The first part of the year here, Spencer had some stiffness in his left shoulder, and that uh, may be attributed to some of that ERA as well. And he has starts to back into shape here in the second half of the season, particularly here in the conference schedule. Missed outside, it's two balls and two strikes. Hey, what? He might have had a sore shoulder early in the year, but he's sure nice and loose because you can just tell by the reaction watching the ball move. That he's really getting tremendous extension on that delivery. 2 2 pitch on the ground to the shortstop. Junkin, an easy play. And the runners will stay out there. Sean Spencer gets Ryan Leib to bounce out and end the second. No runs, two hits. They're both left. We've played an inning and a half. The Beavers and the Huskies are scoreless.
there's your score. Bottom of the second inning, Oregon State and Washington are scoreless. Brian Lauk, Sean Malley, and Tim Bishop will face Stosh Jackson. And maybe it's one of those days where you're Stosh Jackson and you come to the ballpark thinking, hey, I'm going to watch the game. Maybe I'll throw an inning or so. I threw yesterday, and, and all of a sudden during batting practice, the coach goes, Stosh, you're starting. Let's look at this, though, too. Maybe the Huskies were expecting to face Jeff Tuck today and mentally prepared, prepared to face Jeff, and Jeff's not even pitched for Oregon State. So now they've got to make some adjustments and figure out something about this left hander that virtually uh, none of us know a heck of a lot about. Brian Lauk having a solid year, three homers, 17 RBIs. Well, Stosh had a walk and a strikeout in the first inning. High with that one, it's one and one. You put a pitcher out there that hasn't lost a game in a couple of years, a senior year in high school, 14 and 0 with an ERA under one. He's, he's used to winning. This is outside, two and one. Boy, the, you talk about losing a lot of punch from one year to the next. Oregon State had to absorb some heavy losses from the conference championship team last year. Louds fouls it back. Mason Smith, who was 11 and three with a 2.40 ERA. Mike Thurman, 10 and four with a, a, a 2.84 ERA. Both those guys signed pro contracts. In fact, Thurman was a first round pick by Montreal. Another guy up there you haven't talked about yet there, Mark Court. Breaking pitch, strike three calls. Stosh Jackson has a pair of strikeouts. Oh, breaking ball by the freshman left-hander. Hitter gives up on it right there. I'll tell you what, for both Jackson and Sean Spencer, home plate umpire Phil Jordan is giving the low strike. As long as he's consistent, guys, for nine innings. Sean Malley takes outside. It's 1 0. A homer in 12 RBIs. Breaking pitch outside. It's 2 0. Malley's a guy that once the Pac 10 season started, he started to hit. His numbers in Pac 10 play have been pretty impressive. Watch that one foul and out of play. It's 2 1. Of course, he shares time with Christian Shuey behind the plate, but. Coach Knudsen likes to get his bat in the lineup. He'll DH on occasion. And uh, Christian Shuey actually has a swollen right ankle that he's nursing a little bit here coming into the weekend. Uh, he is ready to play and caught one of the games yesterday, but uh, that might have something to do with Malley getting the start here today on top of his hot bat. Strike at the letters, it's two and two. In furthering last year's numbers for Oregon State, they were 35 and 16, 22 and 8 to win the Pac 10 North title. Strike three called outside corner. Stosh Jackson has struck out three Huskies in a row now. Damn, he's not messing around. The young freshman is doing a good job of not only changing pitches, but location right on the corner. That pitch right there is unhittable. Here's his first pitch to Tim Bishop. There's a strike. It's all in one. Tim Bishop, a freshman. As is Stosh Jackson. The 0 1. Good breaking ball. He took a little bit off. Yeah, for the, I'll tell you what, sitting from here from our vantage point, right behind home plate, it, you can just kind of see the confidence in this freshman left hander Jackson out there mounting with each and every pitch. He is 0-2 to Bishop. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Stosh Jackson, unhittable. Four straight punch outs. He strikes out the side here in the second. We're headed to the third. The Beavers and the Huskies are scoreless. There's your score. There is none. As we head to the top of the third, Oregon State and Washington. We would be remiss if we did not mention the the unfortunate passing of 
uh, a cohort of ours, Jimmy Jones of Prime Sports, who for many years has covered the Oregon State football, basketball, and baseball teams, and uh, everyone here at Prime Sports uh, feels the loss. And uh, I know he was a, a big part of the Oregon State program as well. I had an opportunity to work with Jimmy here, right here on Prime Sports, doing Husky baseball a number of years ago, and he will certainly be missed. David Schmidt, Scott Harden, Alan Snelling. For the Beavers, 9-1-2 here in the third. There's no score. Spencer misses high with a fastball. It's 2-1. and one. We have quite a pitching matchup here. Sean Spencer has four strikeouts. Stosh Jackson has four strikeouts. 2-1 pitch is a fly ball down the left field line. Laux is over, and it's out of play. I'll tell you what, gentlemen. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Both these pitchers right now are getting the ball and getting up on the hill and throwing. They're not messing around. Yeah, Jackson only used uh, 13 pitches to strike out the side that uh, second inning. We're picking up right where we left off yesterday. The Huskies winning that second game one to nothing with one unearned run. And we might have a similar situation here today. Strike, the yeah, strike three called. Spencer now has five strikeouts. One thing that you mentioned, Dave, early on is the rapidity with which Spencer is working, and I think Stoss Jackson is, is kind of in that same mm -hmm. rhythm. There's a strike, a changeup, and it's 0-1. And, and as a hitter, that could be kind of deceiving because you, you want to get in there and swing the bat, but if you feel a little bit rushed and you're on the pitcher's clock, it can throw you off a bit. You're exactly right. And as we uh, watch this game unfold right here, let's see if the hitters don't elect to maybe step out and call timeout to break up the rhythm of both these pitchers. Bouncer to the shortstop, Junkin. In time, two down. And I'm sure that Stosh Jackson, the freshman from Oregon State, he's sitting over there and hopefully watching Spencer, who gets a ground ball out to shortstop right here with a low fastball. As we see Junkin come in and make the strong throw across the diamond, but back to Jackson for Oregon State. I'm sure that he's sitting there and, and hopefully trying to learn from this guy right there, and that is Spencer. He misses outside to the switch hitting DH Allen Snelling. So five strikeouts, no walks for Spencer. He got Snelling to fly out back in the first inning. Wow. Missed second place, and it's 2-0. I'll tell you, you see right there, Spencer gets right back up on the mound. He's behind two and all, but he's ready to go. Line drive, base hit, center field. So Snelling is aboard with a two-out hit. Nice job. The Beavers have the only three hits in this ball game. Snelling was 0 for 6 yesterday in the doubleheader. Gets a good lick on that pitch right there. Two-out base hit. Snelling batted in the nine hole yesterday. You move him up to the two spot. It's base hit here for you in the third and eight. If you're Pat Casey, you want your boys in the black tops to get up there and start swinging the bat. Throw the first and Snelling is back. And if you like to crunch numbers, crunch a few of these as far as Snelling goes now. He was 0 for 6 yesterday. Coming into the ball game today, he was 2 of 57 lifetime against Washington. He's one for two today. Hooker shoots it foul and out of play. That makes him what? Three of 58, right? Get <laughs> <laughs> Snelling over there at first base. Uh, only one stolen base attempt on the year. We mentioned it a couple times now. That Casey does not run very much. Well, he doesn't really have the speed to run. I, I think if, if there's one area he'd like to improve on his club, there are some areas other than this but speed is something that he'd like to add defense is another one that, that concerns him this year and I think depth in his pitching staff oh one pitch line try that's going to be a base hit down the right field line and Snelling's headed to third Vandergreen bobbles the ball snowing around third they'll hold him there well, Vandergreen just had problems coming up with it I'll tell you I was watching Pat Casey the third base coach over there for Oregon State and he wanted it the worst way to send that runner to get that first run across for Oregon State but John uh, out in right field Vandergreen does a good job of retrieving it as we see here a slicing single actually it's probably going to be ruled a double I imagine 
There you see the man at first rounding. That's Snelly. He's digging hard now. If you see if we can see Casey down the lower right-hand corner, we're not going to see it. But at the very last moment, Casey threw up the stop sign, and there you see Snelly diving back into third. But boy, I'll tell you, he wanted to get that runner in there somehow. And for for the second time in the ball game, Oregon State with runners at second and third. There are two outs, however. Pat Mywas, who's one for one, stands in, rolls it to the shortstop, junk it. In time, and the inning is over. No runs, two more hits, and two more left for the Beavers. We head to the bottom of the third. In Seattle, there's no score. There's your score. Oregon State in Washington. Headed to the bottom of the third. Rich Waltz, Dave Haverlo, Eric Radovich. Glad uh, you're with us today here in Seattle. And who would have expected Stoss Jackson to come out of nowhere and throw the heck out of the ball as he has done today? He's done very well. He's kept his ball ball team right in it. I think that Pat Casey's probably got to be one of the happiest guys over there in that Oregon State dugout besides Stoss Jackson and his family. And the kid's throwing well. Yeah. All right, Brian Souls, Chris Whitemarsh, Joe Trippy against Stosh Jackson, who throws a strike. It's all in one. Well, with a name like Stosh Jackson, you would expect him to throw the ball well. Oh, and two. He has struck out four in a row. Right back up on the hill. There you see the batter for the Huskies, Soul, step out. Buy a little bit more time. More TV time that way, stepping out. Tried to get him to bite on the breaking ball. It's outside, it's one and two. Jackson really doing a nice job of throwing low strikes as well. Washington likes to hit the ball like most hitters do around the belt area. He's keeping it down. Lined in a right field. Malloy is there and he makes the catch. It's not a strikeout, but Stosh Jackson will take it. Break the snaps that string of four. Interesting. We're looking down here at my score sheet. All the outs have been recorded with the exception of one fielder's choice back in the first. There's only been two balls hit to the outfield, and both of them were caught. One was a fly ball to center field by Vandergreen, and then that fly ball right there by Souls. So it's either a strikeout or a flyout. White Marsh now. Swings and misses. Both left handers must have been very happy. Although Jackson had no idea he was starting when he arrived at the park. But when Spencer got to the park and looked at the flag and saw the wind blowing in a bit from left field, that's a good sign when you're a left handed pitcher. Sure. You got to figure the op uh, opposing coach is going to load that lineup with right handed hitters in there. Well, I'll tell you what, to hit one out of left field today with that breeze blowing from left to right, he'll take a pretty good bolt. Take a driver in the three wood for me. The one one White Marsh takes a strike and it's one and two. We mentioned Junkin and Souls as far as solidifying the defense but White Marsh's play at second base has been a big help. He's the future at shortstop for Washington and uh, getting his legs uh, some work at second base. He calls timeout and he'll step out. I'll tell you, the Huskies lost a pretty good shortstop. It was Brent Newell, wasn't it? The shortstop last year, Eric. Did a fine job for Ken Knudsen. That's right. The uh, middle infield gone uh, the major league draft last year. Both Newell and Ryan Rice. Breaking ball, and White Marsh just got a hold of it. So tough to have a good, consistent defense when you got to replace the middle of your infield. And the Huskies struggled defensively early in the year, but uh, I think they've got the combination now with Souls starting at third, Junkin at short, and White Marsh at second base. Uh, really uh, not making more than one air per game. And in talking about that trio, Ken Knutson said basically we have three high school shortstops, and so all three of those guys can play. One two pitch foul back. That stays at one and two. Pretty good matchup right here. Freshman, freshman, White Marsh coming out of that Kamayakan program over in the Tri Cities. The senior team was 25 and 1 in high school. Won the state AAA championship under Rex Easley, and he's wearing a Husky uniform. 
One two pitch foul back. He did his hacks in too. <laughs> and, and he's doing something that some Husky hitters have not been able to do the first time through the lineup, and that's make Stosh Jackson throw a number of pitches. Fight him off, fight him off. Good foul ball, get more baseball. He'll so be up there protecting the plate with two strikes on you. The one two. Swing and a miss. Number five for Stosh Jackson. Looks like a little off speed pitch. Pulled a string on that one. Watch the location for that is an outstanding pitch right there. White Marsh not able to come up with it. Down in the strike zone, an off speed breaking ball for the second out of the inning. Here's Joe Trippy, whom Jackson walked back in the first. And the experts that we were, we all bantered about saying, boy, you don't want to lead the walk the leadoff guy. And that could be trouble for Jackson, but since then he's really tightened up. Light the freshman. And it's an error on Ryan Light. Well, this is just one of the few ground balls we've seen today. You see the shortstop light coming over in perfect position. Perhaps he tried to throw that ball before he had his meat hand on it. So the first error of the ball game recorded against Oregon State. And over there at first base, you see Joe Trippy, who I don't think will be standing on that bag very deep into the count. Yeah, we'll see if Holmes can lay off a pitch or two here. And Trippy, again with those 16 consecutive steals, looking for a number 17 in a row from first base. He's got 22 on the season. Holmes. I believe it was the second pitch of the sequence back in the first inning when he bounced into the fielder's choice. There goes Trippy. The pitch is high and outside. The throw is not in time. 17 in a row. That in itself is a remarkable accomplishment. 17 straight stolen bases. Trippy gets a good jump. There's a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Pretty good throw to, or pretty good pitch to come up throwing, but Smith not able to get it close as Trippy got a great jump, so down to second base is Joe Trippy for the Huskies. Craig Holmes now with a chance to drive in the run. Two outs and Jackson steps off. Jackson hasn't had to work from the stretch much. Holmes takes a stride. It's one and one that low strike. Jackson, it, it, it seems, is utilizing that a lot more than Spencer is. Good job of mixing it up, and that was a low strike given to him by the home plate umpire, but it's a strike nonetheless. And it's been a strike from the first pitch. Yep. Stosh tries to pick Trippy off. I think Trippy had aspirations of probably trying to get his 18th in a row. He's taken third base a couple of times this year, no question about it. If the pitcher uh, falls asleep, they'll get a jump out there. I'll tell you, Rich and Eric, his feet were real active out there as Josh or uh, Jackson came to the set position. There goes Trippy. Fastball high. The throw to third. The streak is over. It ends at 17 as David Schmidt throws out Joe Trippy. And the inning is over. No runs, no hits. There was one error. Nobody left on base. There's no score. Washington and Oregon State. Along with Eric Radovich and Dave Haverlow, I'm Rich Waltz. There's your score. Oregon State and Washington are scoreless. And a pair of left handers have dazzled here today. Matt Bailey leads it off for Oregon State and Sean Spencer delivers down low. It is one and oh Spencer has five strikeouts. He is allowed four hits. Hasn't walked anybody. Bailey was a strikeout victim back in the second. Here's a very good chance to watch a, a backdoor breaking ball starts. Looks like it's way outside of the hitter. Just clips the outside corner. Umpire raises that right hand. Two balls and a strike. I'll tell you what, guys, one one run looms large. Well, it certainly did yesterday. 
In the second game of the doubleheader, Washington won the ball game, one nothing. The run was unearned. Vander Green makes the catch, yeah. and he robs Bailey of extra bases. Right out, catch right there by the big right fielder for the Huskies. Right-handed hitter. That ball is going to slice away from the right fielder. Watch John Vandergreen reach up with that left hand in full stride and run it down. So John's been fairly active out there today in right field. Second time he's caught a fly ball in the contest. That was a great play. He's a converted first baseman yeah. as well and uh, has learned to play that outfield. Mark Malloy now for the Beavers takes high. He had a double back in the second. Oregon State has had their opportunities. They've left a pair of runners on the last two innings. We're scoreless in the four. Excuse me, I didn't want to swing at that one. One and one to count. Little bunt, Spencer. You got to know he's a good fielding pitcher. Yep. He's the best first baseman on the team, and he fields his position awfully well on the mound as well. So there's two outs. The freshman first baseman over there, Tim Bishop, uh, started to come in and then wisely went back to take the throw from Spencer at the bag. Good job of fielding his position right there. And you're exactly right, Eric. I think that if Bishop had come in and picked that ground ball up, there would have been another base hit registered by Oregon State. Chris Wakeland swinging at the first pitch. He'll send Trippy back, who has room and makes the catch. No strikeouts, but Sean Spencer makes quick work of the Beavers here in the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. To the bottom of the fourth we go. Beavers and Huskies are still scoreless. All quiet in the dorms. All quiet in Graves Field as well. There's no score in this ball game as we head to the bottom of the fourth Leading inning. The fourth inning for Everybody from the dorm is right here at Graves Field Number watching two, the ball game. Gray. Or playing oh. softball in the background. Yeah, it's a great day here in Seattle. Blessed by good weather this weekend. Stosh Jackson working on Craig Holmes and it's fouled off. Almost got our cameraman. That was one of the first pitches from Jackson that was up in the zone. He's really kept the ball down and away from the Washington hitter. Mike Cooley having trouble going to his right. There's a strike on the outside corner. You're not, you're not going <laughs> to get one of our cameramen. Uh uh. <laughs> Quick as a cat. No balls, two strikes. Stosh Jackson didn't want to throw the fastball. You could see him shaking off Dave Schmidt. It's kind of a lonely job being. Who do you talk to out there? Yourself? Holmes reached on that fielder's choice. You're not going to answer me, are you? I've never been out there, so I don't know. It's <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Holmes, who was at the plate when Joe Trippy got thrown out at third base to end the third inning. Holmes stays alive. Holmes, Vander Green, and Ross Junkin. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the Huskies can do now as they're going, uh, getting their second look at this freshman pitcher out there for Oregon State. Now ball to the right side. Kevin Hooker on to first. Well, we haven't seen that very much today. Ground ball to second baseman. One out. John Vander Green now. Vandergreen came a few, I don't want to say inches because it was a lot closer than that to hitting a ball out of here his first time up. There's a look at Kenny Knudsen. If anyone can appreciate a day when left handed pitchers are owning the afternoon, it's Ken Knudsen, who was an all conference left handed pitcher here in 81. Saw his career record there. He picked up that uh, win number 100 in his kind of ball game, a two to nothing win over Portland last Wednesday down in the Rose City. 
Vander Green takes a strike. It's one and one. You know, close ball games. We had uh, the doubleheader yesterday, five to three and one to nothing that the Huskies won. You look at those coaches over there, they look cool, calm, and collected, but those close games, it would be great if you could shoot the inside of that stomach and see what's turning in there. One and two now to Vandergreen, who has been a tough out for everybody in the Pac-10 North. Came in at 4.33. It's Josh Jackson's one-two pitch. Popped him up behind third. Mywis. Oh, great catch. Makes it. Wow. I thought he overran it. I did too. And he had to come back and get it. That right there was a big loop catch, gentlemen. Yeah, the fans on both sides uh, like that catch. Not hit very hard. Watch Myrus right here. It looks like he may have run this ball, but he comes back for it. He's checking to see where the four wheeler that they dragged the field with is. And look at that diving catch right there for out number two. We do have some wind here, and I think that moved that ball around a little bit. He was running to the spot he thought it would come down, but the wind kind of pushed it back in. Ross Junkin called out on strikes in the first. Stosh Jackson with a breaking ball right on his hands. Well, I'll tell you what, this young man wore number one on the back of his uniform and doing a great job of changing pitches against these hitters. And again, as I mentioned earlier, now these Husky hitters are getting their second look at the left-hander in the ball game. One ball, one strike. I kind of got to believe that the young man from Milwaukee, Oregon, Putnam High School, has opened up some eyes over there with Pat Casey and that coaching staff of Oregon State. We certainly opened uh, our eyes up up here. We didn't think he would last too long. He's already thrown 51 pitches here in the ball game. He's got two outs, nobody on here in the fourth inning. Uh, very impressed with the left-hander. And out in front of Junkin, the cleanup hitter, at one and two. Bottom of the fourth, no score. The one two pitch in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Well as we've talked about he was not aware that he was starting until probably about 45 minutes before yep. game time. Well you and I were at the park early along with Eric and we talked to Pat Casey and he wasn't sure who he was going to start. The two two. Strike three call but it gets by the catcher Schmidt on his way to first is Junkin and he'll get there. On a strikeout and a pass ball. Wow. A good live fastball. Here's a look at it. Certainly could have been caught. Now you see Junkin getting a late start out of the box. And into first base. Strikeout. What is that? A little strikeout in an air? Strikeout and a pass ball. That's right. Brian Laux was a strikeout victim back in the second. Junkin, despite his size, has eight stolen bases this year. Got to believe he's going to be shooting for number nine here pretty soon. Coach Knudsen, uh, he likes to run with a runner on at first and two down to get that guy into scoring position as, a, as opposed to waiting for two base hits to move him all the around the bases. Runner goes, time was called. It'll all go back. Fortunately for Oregon State, time was called because that time, Bailey over at first base for Oregon State got the ball down to the shortstop covering, but the ball hit that ejector button in Leip's glove and popped out, or Junkin would have been safe. But time was called by home plate umpire. I'll tell you what, credit Jackson out there for Oregon State. Come and set and holding it. Hold the ball and don't be in a big hurry and see if you can get the runner over there at first to come in. A look at Phil Jordan who's working behind the play. Well remember back in the first Craig Holmes stole second on a throw to first and you can see Matt Bailey the first baseman he had trouble getting the ball out of his glove and that was a, a problem yesterday in a very important point of the second game. Runner goes fastball sails all the way to Bellevue. Junkin is a, he'll get a stolen base for that. That almost looked like a pitch out that the catcher had no idea was coming. That pitch was just high and outside and taken off. And that might be the topic of discussion right now. 
That was not a pitch out. That was a pitch up. Pitch up. Well, it hit the backstop on the fly, so. <laughs> That's confusing sometimes for hitters. Like, whoop, look out. There he goes. I think you're right, Eric. I think that was a pitch out that either wasn't called or was called and not uh, received. Yes. Now Lauchs with a chance to drive in a run. That play yesterday I was talking about when Bailey had trouble at first base getting the ball out of his club was the only run that was scored in the second game in a one nothing Washington win. Ball fouled back. It was a ground ball to the shortstop. Ryan Live with a runner at second. The throw went to first. Bailey had trouble getting the ball out of his glove and the runner scored and it was the only run in the one nothing Husky win. Well, it's tough too when you lose on an unearned run like that. Yeah, Kevin Hooker went eight strong innings for Oregon State. All right it's one and one now to Laux. Laux swing with a hot bat he was four for five yesterday with a couple of doubles. Junkins at second and Stosh Jackson. Trying to keep the zeros on the scoreboard. Good pitch, and it's one and two. <laughs> Dude, not only a good pitch, but a good hack up there. Brian Locks up there was really swinging to make it a 2 0 game. He had a pretty good rip at that one. Let's see if the left hander now does it. Maybe want to come back with something off speed. It's an indication to the pitchers that it might be watching this game at home that when they're fouling them straight back, you're not exactly fooling those hitters. One two breaking ball ground ball in the hole that's a base hit. Randy third is jumping they'll send him to the play. Here's the throw he is safe at the plate. And it's a one nothing Washington lead. There was a pretty good pitch it was an off speed pitch it was down in the strike zone but Locks did a good job of hitting the ball and pulling to the left side and I'll tell you what Junkin never hesitated rounding third and he comes in they'll see the location see that ball is down in the zone that is a good pitch right there. Now you see Wakelin, the left fielder, coming up. The left-hander makes a throw, and the ball just gets away from the catcher. As you see, Junkin right here sliding in with the first and only run of the ball game. I think they would have had him at the plate, didn't the throw beat him to the dish? Could have been very close, and Junkin had to hold up uh, initially so he wouldn't run into the tag if the third baseman picked that ball up. And Junkin then was able to get his momentum going. And Never hesitated, as you mentioned, coming around third base. Sean Malley fouls it off. Not only the first run, but obviously the first hit against Stosh Jackson. And you got to remember, Junkin really was the third out of the inning. He struck out to end the inning, but the pass ball put him aboard. So the Huskies manufacture a run here. And it's an unearned run again. Being a former pitcher, I think of things like that, guys. Breaking ball, bounce to the shortstop. Light with a long throw, makes it. And the inning is over. It should have been over a long time ago for Stosh Jackson. Washington gets a run. On a hit, there were no errors. And a man left. We played four. The Huskies have a 1 0 lead over Oregon State. One nothing ball game Washington on top of Oregon State the Beavers trying to get the run back here in the top of the fifth Ryan Light, David Schmidt and Scott Harden to face Sean Spencer in a game that has moved along quickly that was a rather protracted bottom of the fourth inning will that have any effect on Sean Spencer who has been the, the model of efficiency out there well we're going to find out I'll tell you probably one of the happiest guys in the ballpark right now is. Merrick sitting down there in that bullpen looking maybe getting another save. Vandy Green right at him. One out, one pitch, one out. John's had a busy day out in the right field. And now David Schmidt, the number nine hitter, the catcher, a strikeout victim back in the third inning. Five strikeouts now for Spencer. He's allowed four hits. Ooh, good breaking ball. Out in front, 0 and 1. Boy, hit 
at the target. It's 0 2. When you can throw that slow curveball and then come back with yep. this heat on the outside corner, no chance for the left handed batter. Painting the corners. Glove didn't move much. Ball of five. One ball, two strikes. Tried to be a little bit too perfect with that curveball right there, the off speed pitch. Little looper gonna fall. Base hit. Trippy up with it. And the Beavers have their fifth hit of the ball game. Good piece of hitting there by Schmidt to go down and get that perfect pitch. Watch this pitch down on the strike zone, left hander against left hander on the outside part of the plate. Schmidt does a good job of slapping it out there to center field as Trippy comes in and retrieves it. So let's see if Pat Casey, now the head coach of Oregon State, maybe doesn't try to hit and run, get something going here. Change up for a strike to Scott Harden, the leadoff man, center fielder for this Beaver team. At first base is David Schmidt. He, like most Beavers, not a base stealing threat. Fly ball down the right field line. The wind is going to push that into the corner. Vander Green makes the catch. The runner has tagged, and Schmidt is just in under the throw. That's a good play on both ends. First for Vander Green, who really has good mobility despite his size. And then Schmidt hustling up and heads up to tag. Watch Vandergreen come off the fence here as he makes the catch. And it's so tough to come up and throw after banging into the fence there. So it's a nice play. And Oregon State has the tying run in scoring position. Allen Snelling, one for two in the ball game. Little looper in the left field, charging his louts. He's there to make the catch. And the inning is over. No runs a hit. The Beavers leave their fifth runner of the ball game. As we head to the bottom of the fifth, Sean Spencer and the Huskies on top, 1-0. One nothing Washington on top of Oregon State. Cam Cleveland, Lawyer Malloy sitting this one out. They played in that spring game yesterday. Maybe a little sore there. Stosh Jackson now goes to work on the Huskies. Bottom third of the order. Tim Bishop, Ryan Souls, and Chris Whitemarsh. Bishop went down swinging in the second. He's only had 10 at bats this year. He has a pair of hits. And Jackson with the breaking ball. It's fouled at the play. Yeah, we talked about Jackson, who's out there pitching for Oregon State, came to the ballpark today, probably wasn't aware that he would be out there starting this third game of this uh, weekend series. Now you're looking at Bishop, and I wonder if he knew he was going to get a chance to start today. It's only Bishop's second start on the season. Ball in the dirt. It's one and one. We talked about the absence of Malloy and what that meant for the Husky batting order and defense but Cam Cleland's a guy that's seen some time at first base as well. Cleland had a touchdown pass in yesterday's spring game. And he and Malloy having to sit out this ball game. They'll be back in action on Wednesday though. The one one to Bishop. Oh, fly ball well hit right field. Malloy going back warning track and it's off the wall. And Tim Bishop is going to run around. He'll call for three now. He thinks better of it. He pulled the shoot right around right. the second. I tell you, I thought that ball had a chance of getting out of here, guys, when that was first hit. It was a ball up in the strike zone. Bishop did a good job of taking it that way. See how that ball was up in the strike zone, probably above the belt. You see the right field of Malloy giving chase. The wind playing tricks on him out there. Hits right at the base of the field and scoots away from him. Maloney in hot pursuit as Bishop lumbered around first and goes into second with a leadoff double. So Stosh Jackson has now given up two hits. Ryan Souls lined out his first time up for Bishop, his first career double. Want to know to Souls? Interesting defensive lineman here. Bailey over at first base for the Beavers. In on the grass. You got a left handed hitter up there. Perhaps Souls can get the ball to the right side and move the runner up. 
Beavers are thinking bunt, but Souls isn't showing bunt. It's 2 0 oh now. Schmidt is out to talk to Stoss Jackson. Six strikeouts and one walk. Those last two pitches from Jackson, both up and in. And uh, that's usually a sign that a guy's starting to tire when that ball gets up in the zone. Of course, here's a guy that's only pitched seven innings all year, working into his fifth inning here this afternoon. And uh, he hasn't seen this kind of work, Dave. And Eric, also the double by Bishop was a ball that was up in the zone as well. Bishop resides at second base. Nobody out. Bottom of the fifth. Souls takes high, and it's three and zero. Well, when you talk about Stoss Jackson, this is his 13th ball game, and in 12 appearances, he had pitched only seven innings. So he's not a guy that has gone any length of time at all this year. A strike makes it three and one. It doesn't help when you have to spend half your time trying to catch the ball from your catcher. Three and one to count. The Ryan Souls, Chris White Marsh is on deck. A one nothing Washington lead, bottom of the fifth. Souls hits a fly ball, left center. Wakeland is there and he makes the catch. Tell you what, Wakeland from left field did a good job of running that ball down. The ball wasn't hit very deep. I think Wakeland got an outstanding jump. And Chris comes over from left field and runs that ball down. Ideally, you'd like to have your center fielder catch that one because then he would be in a perfect position to come up throwing where Wakeland, the left handed left fielder, might have been an awkward throw, but the ball wasn't hit very deep, and I don't think Bishop possesses great speed down there at second. White Marsh, he'll try to bunt and takes a strike. It's 0 1. Maybe the best bunter on the team. He likes to show bunt early and try and draw the third baseman. That's Pat Mywis of Oregon State that'll creep in now on the cut of the infield grass. And that makes him a little better hitter as well. The 0 1. Line into left field. It falls for a base hit, knocked down by Wakeland, and Bishop has to hold at second base. Well, I'll tell you what. Left fielder Chris Wakeland did a good job right there. That ball gets underneath his glove, probably will roll to the wall, the warning track out there, and you're going to get another run in. There you see White Marsh, the kid out of Kamiak, and hit the sinking line drive, and there's Wakeland diving for it. I think initially he came up with it, caught it off the grass, but then it wasn't deep enough to get away from where Bishop could advance. The leadoff man, Trippy now, runners first and second, one out. Stosh Jackson, fast ball popped up, and it's 0 and 1. The coach Ken Knudsen and third base coach there, Joe Ross, would have liked to have seen Bishop get to third on that play, but he got kind of hung up there in no man's land and did the right thing, getting back to second base. Yeah, a little insurance run here for the Huskies would be pretty big. Again, I think Trippy's probably going to have to hit a ball either down the line or in the gap to score Bishop from second here. Jackson, of course, trying to roll a double play ball if you can. Bishop, not a threat to run. He's yet to steal a base this year, and we saw with his ball to right field that maneuvering around the bases is not his strong point. He's not at this point in his career. And I doubt that Pat Casey, the head coach of Oregon State, likes to see the ball thrown around very much in a situation like this. If you get guys throwing that ball around, as many bad things can happen as, as good. Jackson's pitch. Trippy takes a strike. It's 0 2. It's going to be a breaking ball right here by Jackson and just freezes Trippy. Nice pitch right there, good location. Jackson seems to have two different speeds on his breaking pitch. That that didn't come all that far. What a sharp breaking. Low two pitch misses outside. Eric, you have some news for us? We do have some activity down there in the Oregon State bullpen down the right field line. Big Tyler Swinburnson, a sophomore from Blaine, Washington, up near the Canadian border, getting some work in here early. Well, it makes you wonder just how far they're going to go with Jackson. He 
you get a double play ball right here. I'll tell you, Pat Casey will breathe a little sigh of relief. I'll tell you, this freshman's throwing the ball well today. The one, two. And it's two balls and two strikes. Trippy's a tough guy to double up. He has walked and reached on an error. His stolen base streak is over. He came in at 16 in a row. He swiped second, but was thrown out trying to steal third back in the third. 17 in a row for Trippy. Here's Jackson's pitch. Line drive left field. Wakelet. A little easier play this time. And Bishop has to scamper back to second base. Well, Trippy hit that ball right on the screws. Now we're going to get Casey, the head coach of Oregon State. He's going to trot out here to the mound and perhaps talk to his pitcher. Eric, it brings up an interesting uh, observation you mentioned, though. If the ball gets by Wakelin out there in left field and Bishop goes to third, boom, fly ball right there, mine scoring. I don't know if that fly ball would have scored Mr. Bishop, though. Well, but it's, it, your point is it, it changes the complexion of the inning and the at bat for Trippy if sure. you can get the man to third base. It was one of those situations if Bishop would have been at third. Trippy, uh, also a very good butter, might have uh, seen the safety squeeze situation that uh, Ken Knudsen is gone to a number of times this year. What just try to get the ball in play. Dave, what do you think Pat Casey just told his uh, freshman left-hander? Well, it, one of the things I'm sure Pat will go out there and just remind the kid is, hey, you've got two outs now. you got a man on first and second. Don't give in, don't give up, and keep battling. You're not completely out of the woods yet, and you've got to go hard and get Craig Holmes out here, and I'm sure that Pat Casey just reminding the left-hander how he's gotten Holmes out in his previous at-bats. Two ground ball outs. Holmes reached on a fielder's choice in the first and bounced to second in the fourth. And I'm not sure why they're so interested in, in, in Mr. Bishop out at second base. Well, they want to keep him real close. So even with two down, he's not real fast. And a two out single might not even score him if they can keep him real close to second base. Again, the, the spin move like that, maybe Casey told him that, hey, go ahead and let him keep him close out there, but don't throw the ball. We don't want any, anything careless happening here and creating a situation we don't want. We can't get out of it. Breaking ball is a strike. It's 0 and 1. You know, with with White Marsh and Trippy at the plate, I felt that the spin move the second was more to see if the if the batter was bunting and, and maybe he would tip his hand because it left hander motion that kind of starts the pitching motion and you can get hitters to do that. But obviously not a bunting situation here as Holmes takes inside and it's one and one. And two good pitches right there by Jackson against home. First pitch was a breaking ball down the strike zone for a strike. Now it comes back with a fastball and just misses, but the ball was down in the zone. Dave Schmidt running through the sequence of signs behind home play. And that might be something else that perhaps Casey saw. Maybe they went out with the pitcher and catcher to change the sequence of signs so that the man down a second baseman down a second base isn't able to pick it up. You can see Schmidt getting the signs from the dugout and then relays them out to the mound. Outside corner, it's one and two. Another ball down in the zone, backdoor breaking ball, and the umpire has been very, very consistent all day. And that is a second strike against the hitter, Craig Holmes. Bishop at second, White Marsh at first, and Stosh Jackson steps off. A run on three hits for Washington, no runs, five hits, and one error for Oregon State. You like to see this from the freshman who's grown up a lot today. He wants to make sure that he is on the right page and right sequence with his catcher back there, David Smith. So he steps off, call your catcher out so there is no confusion. Even though this is his second start this season, he's no stranger to starting pitching. He was 14 and 0. Putnam High School in Milwaukee, Oregon. Foul back. It's one and two. That's a good pitch right there by Jackson as well as the ball down and away from the right-handed hitter that uh, Craig Holmes was just barely able to foul off and stay alive. But this young freshman out here has certainly grown with each and every pitch and each and every inning. The one-two pitch in the dirt, knocked away by Schmidt. Oh, they got him first. They got him first. Yeah, the runner from first, White Marsh held up, and he's out. And for Stosh Jackson, that's a nice break. David Schmidt blocked the ball. Bishop started towards third and then held up, and White Marsh was hung out to dry. And the inning ends without a run, two hits, no errors. A man left. We're headed to the sixth. Washington leads Oregon State one nothing.
one nothing ball game Washington on top of Oregon State. Eric Gravesfield on the campus of the University of Washington. Pac-10 baseball continues on Prime Sports Wednesday at 4:30. The Lewis and Clark State taking on Washington State. Wednesday 4:30. LC State and Washington State. Mike yep. Kincaid against uh, Ed Chef, Chef and the boys over there. That's developed into quite a battle over there in Pullman. Well, the, and, and the, Lewis. the Warriors are always very, very good. And right now, the number one team in NAIA baseball. Spencer with a breaking ball, fly ball into right field. Vandegreen has been involved in just about every inning, makes a catch. One of the easier plays for John out there in right field. He didn't have to crash into any walls or go back to the warning track. Yeah, Kevin Hooker flying out. Matt Myers and Matt Bailey now for Oregon State. And you know, there's a lot of first pitches that Oregon State has gone after with Sean Spencer on the mound. There's three or four times in this ball game that Spencer has thrown one pitch and gotten one out. Iowa's is one for two. I'll tell you the thing that's impressive about Spencer today is back earlier in, the, in his ball game in the second and I think the, the second and third inning both times um, Oregon State was threatening but Spencer was able to get the ground ball to shortstop for the third out. Fly ball center field trippy. Is there and makes the catch. The last six outs recorded by Spencer have all been on fly balls to the outfield. First baseman, Matt Bailey. Matt Bailey now. Spencer was overpowering early. He had five strikeouts through three innings, but he hasn't struck anyone out since. As Bailey takes outside, it's one and oh. You know that if we get a fly ball to the outfield to left field oh, to end this inning, we'll tie a Pac-10 record. It's the 1 0 pitch, it's outside, and it's 2 0. Four fly balls in the inning. Yeah, just everybody in the alphabet ties a record. Held by many. Many, yeah, that's right. Here's the 2 0 <laughs> pitch. It's a strike, and it's 2 1. Honestly, can't tell you who tied, who the last team to do that was, but I've got a lot of idle time. Yeah, well, you guys can help. Dig into the record yeah. book, and if, and if you find that record, <laughs> I'll buy you dinner. <laughs> two and one, the count to Bailey. Or actually, two and two. I'm sure, our research staff down there in the truck will dig that one out. Two out, stop at the sixth. One nothing, Washington line drive right at the first base with Bishop, and it was a very quick inning for Sean Spencer. Three up, three down. Spencer has retired five in a row, and as we head to the bottom of the sixth, Washington on top of Oregon State, one nothing. Ball game as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Somebody got a cellular phone and may have to call for help. J.R. Dexter. Hopefully we can revive him as we go to the bottom of the sixth. One nothing ball game and Stosh Jackson throws a fastball that that might that might wake uh, Dexter up. That, that went right back up there. Incoming. Might have ra rattled his cage. <laughs> nope. Didn't move a muscle. That's the job I'm looking for right there. <laughs> we give him an inning off every now and then. Inside, it's one ball and one strike. Stosh Jackson didn't have much time to rest during that oh, half inning, inning because uh, Spencer threw what six, seven pitches. It's two and one now. Craig Holmes. He was at the plate when the Huskies ran themselves out of that fifth inning. White Marsh was. Picked off first base. Holmes, Vandergreen, and Junkin here in the sixth. Two balls and two strikes. Stosh 
Josh Jackson, six strikeouts. His last strikeout came in the fourth inning. He's walked just one. Bounds to the second baseman. And an easy play for Kevin Hooker. I'll tell you what, this, this outing by Jackson is going to be a real boost for his confidence as far as pitching at the collegiate level. And I, and I think for Pat Casey, heck, he he's been looking for a, a three and a four starter. And Stosh may have wrapped up that job for the rest of the year. Well, look right there. Stosh thinks he's number one on the staff. One and the count. He's number one in the program. That's right. Got to believe. Vandergreen takes high. It's 2 0. Oh. I've been impressed with the way he has handled this man. Vandergreen flied out in the first and popped out on that great play by Myrus in the fourth inning. Fly ball left field. Wakeland makes the catch. Two down. I'll tell you what, both these pitchers go right at the hitters. It doesn't make any difference if you get them to ground out or fly out, just get them out, and that's what it's going to happen right here. As John hits a lazy fly ball to right or left field, Wakeland settles under it for out number two. Here's Junkin now. You look at Holmes, Vander Green, and Junkin, the two, three, four hitters in the Washington order. Together, they're hitting about an aggregate 375. And in this ball game, they are 0 for 8, and Junkin has struck out twice. Well, the Huskies only have three hits in the in the afternoon contest thus far. Tells you a little bit about what kind of pitching they're fa uh, facing today, too, in this Jackson kid. Stosh Jackson. Here's his 0-1. Fouled off. Eric, you made the point a couple innings ago. It was Junkins at bat that is the key at bat in this ball game because with two out and nobody aboard, Stosh Jackson struck Ross Junkin out. But the ball popped out of the glove of David Schmidt. Junkin got to first, kept the inning alive. He stole second and scored on the single by Brian Laux, and that's the only run of the ball game. Just missed the corner, one and two. I'll tell you what. Jackson still has it working because Schmidt sat up right on the outside part of the plate and the left hander hit it just outside too much. Popped him up over towards the first base dugout. We'll get our other cameraman. Hey, the freshman, he's bouncing around out there, that pitcher. He was in hot pursuit of that one. It's one and two. That's 80 pitches now in the ball game for Stosh Jackson as you take a look at his line right there. And remember, he did throw yesterday as a reliever. He just faced a couple batters, but he did warm up a few times. So that there might not be a many more pitches left in that arm. The bullpen is active again for Oregon State. The one-two pitch to Junkin. Bounced down the third base line. Backhanded by Mywis. It's a fair oh. ball in time. Nice play. So get Junkin. Nice play by Pat Myers and Stosh Jackson with six very strong innings, and I think he might be done. We're through with six in Seattle, Washington on top of Oregon State. It's a one-nothing ball game. Nothing. Washington on top of Oregon State. The Beavers need some runs as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Sean Spencer to face Mark Malloy, Chris Wakeland, and Ryan Light. Spencer has retired five in a row. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Well, gentlemen, are we at that stage of the ball game where Oregon State hitters are perhaps going to try to bunt for a base hit? Try to get something happening here. Malloy not bunting there. He lines it into center. Trippy makes the catch. I'll tell you what, the Beavers 
aren't that far off of Spencer right now. They've hit a lot of balls in the air. They're starting to hit some balls hard. Bailey's line shot at Bishop to end the sixth was well hit, and that ball was well hit. But Spencer has done a nice job of just throwing strikes, letting his defense play behind him. Wakeland is 0 for 2. I do think we're getting to the point of the ball game where you can start looking down to the Washington bullpen. Yep. Let's see if Mr. Merrick is taking off his jacket. Maybe not here in the seventh, but once we get to the eighth and the ninth inning. Wakeland takes a change up inside. And it's two and one. We mentioned Merrick saved both games yesterday. He also had a save on Wednesday down in Portland, so three saves on the week. I'd be surprised if we see him for more than one inning in this one. Two balls, two strikes. Two two pitch swing and a miss. Sean Spencer. His first strikeout since the third inning. His sixth in the ball game. And I'll tell you what, that fastball had a little extra octane. High fastball right here. He just throws it right by Wakeland. Great location. Ryan Leib takes a ball to one and oh. Pretty good pitch right there by Spencer. Two and oh. Guys, this game's starting to look an awful lot like that second game yesterday. One unearned run in that uh, game yesterday afternoon. The Huskies winning one to nothing. Two and one the count. Two down here in the seventh. There's a good changeup. Straight changeup. That's one of the few straight changeups we've seen from Spencer, and that was ideal. Terrific arm action right there, and just fooled the hitter. Two two pitches high. We'll count now. I'll tell you what, Spencer's still throwing hard. You can hear that ball popping in the glove of Malley back there. Spencer's throwing the ball hard. 3 2 to Ryan Life is a changeup that missed high and outside. Something we haven't seen very much of today, base on balls. It's the first one issued by Spencer. Stosh Jackson, the other left hander, walked the first man he faced, and that's it. So two walks in the ball game. David Schmidt now, the number nine hitter, the catcher, who has struck out and single. Spencer has won four of his last five decisions. One nothing ball game. The Beavers have had opportunities. They've left five on base. Spencer trying to pick the freshman off. And two of those five were at third base. Two more were at second base when the inning ended. High to Schmidt. It's one and oh. Scott Harden, the leadoff man, is on deck. Sean Malley is on his way out to the mound. Life over there at first base has one stolen base on the year and three tries. Good job right there by Manley going out to talk to his pitcher. Spencer has been up in the strike zone in this inning. He's recorded one strikeout as the second out of the inning on a high fastball. But Manley going out there and telling him get the ball back down in the strike zone, make a beat here with the base hit. Manley, one of the co-captains of this Washington team, does it? Real nice job with the pitchers behind the plate. 1 0 pitch. Schmidt goes after it. It's 1 and 1. Good breaking ball right there. A nice sharp breaking ball by the left hander Spencer. So Light finds himself. Oh, I guess it's even in the count. I thought it was 1 and 2. That throw over there. Now we have Spencer earlier in the ball game. He. He did the quick throw, the snap throw over there, where he just step off and fling it over there, but that was out of the with the leg kick right there by Spencer. Good pitch for strike two. It's one and two now. Good pitch right here by the left-hander. 
Right there, right on the top of the shin guards. Terrific location by the left-hander. One ball, two strikes. And it's pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Seven strikeouts on the day, and Sean Spencer keeps the shutout intact here in the seventh. No runs, no hits. A man left for the Beavers. We head to the bottom of the seventh. One nothing Husky. A pleasant Sunday on the campus of the University of Washington. There's a ground ball back to the mound over the first in time. What was that player's name again? I didn't catch it. Not in the program. Here at Graves Field, we've had a fabulous matchup between left-handers. What a known quantity in Sean Spencer. This guy, I don't think anyone had any idea that Stoss Jackson could come out and put up the numbers that he has put up. He has limited Washington to one unearned run, just three hits. Jackson has six strikeouts. He's walked just one. He'll face Brian Lauchs to lead it off up the middle. Life in time. No problem. Not at all. The way the Oregon State bench came out and congratulated Stosh Jackson after the sixth inning, that led me to say I think he's done because it looked like, just from the reaction, it was hats on the back, good job, way to go. But uh, Stosh is back for more. I think Sean, he... Sean Malley's 0 for 2, and he's going to drop a bun down. It's a gorgeous one. There'll be no play. Great job right there, boy. He caught everybody asleep with the switch. My was over at third, and Jackson didn't break hard off the mound, so the Huskies have something going. This is absolutely perfect. Look at how he deadens the ball right here. And scampering down to first base with a base hit. Sean Malley. Now we got timeout called an activity in the Oregon State bullpen. Malley the base runner. Washington a 1-0 lead here in the seventh. Valley did a nice job of uh, realizing the third baseman was playing back behind the bag as we take a look at Tyler Swinburton warming up down there in the Oregon State bullpen. He's been up a couple of times. You can see he's a big kid at 6-4. Pat Casey talking it over with Stoss Jackson. Now Tim Bishop doubled the last time he faced Jackson. Yeah, he drove the ball the other way off the base of the fence and looked like he had a chance to get three bases, but and a lumbered around second base and put the brakes on. And Mr. Bishop will not face Stosh Jackson. He'll face the big right-hander Tyler Swinburneson as he lumbers in from the Oregon State bullpen. So a day's work is done for Stosh Jackson, and what a day it was. Making just his second start, the left-hander leaves with a tremendous effort, and he turns it over to Swinburneson. We'll be right back. The Huskies on top, one nothing. One nothing ball game, bottom of the seventh. Runner at first, and one out. Tyler Swinburneson, who has pitched in relief all year long, comes in one and one with a 4.08 earned run average. And he'll take over for Stosh Jackson. The numbers on Jackson, though not complete, are still impressive. Six and a third innings, four hits, a walk, six strikeouts. The run he gave up. On Earl. He is, however, responsible for Sean Malley at first base. Swinburnson's another pitcher with not a tremendous amount of experience. He's only a sophomore this year, uh, 17 and two thirds innings of work coming into this ball game. He has a brother who plays in uh, Dave Hammerlow's yeah. backyard in central Washington, Ryan Swinburnson. Tyler's a big kid, played his uh, junior college ball at Olympic. Coach Dick Myers before transferring down to 
Oregon State. There's Stosh Jackson. Tell you what, he came into this ball game somewhat of an unknown, but the rest of the players in the Pac-10 that watch his broadcast will certainly know who that left-hander is. He's the day's over. He's known now. Malley's at first, and Swinburne's and chases him back. Malley has a trio of stolen bases this year. I'll tell you, do a lot for Jackson too. A Swinburne can get a double play ball here and keep that runner from scoring. He throws a strike and he's out in front of Tim Bishop, 0 and 1. Bishop hit that booming double back in the fifth inning. And that one's going to get away from the first baseman, Matt Bailey. And the double play is no longer nope. a possibility. Well, second error recorded by Oregon State is see Swinburnson with a quick throw, but it's too far out of the reach of the first baseman, Bailey. So down to second base goes Molly, who led the inning or got on via the bunt base hit. So let's see if Bishop right here can perhaps slap one. I don't think Bishop's going to have to hit it quite as far to score the runner down there at second as it would have taken to score him from second. <laughs> Wind breezing from left to right. Oh, First base side, Bailey makes the catch. <laughs> Bailey didn't look real sure of himself going over there for that pop up. Of course, it is a little breezy here. Well, that you know, that's a difficult. That I always felt in, in my career playing a little bit of third base. I was mostly up the middle. But whenever you come to a dugout, I always liked the dugouts that had a railing or something you could find with your hand. The Washington dugouts just have that roof, so there's a little bit of gray area as you come towards the dugout. Brian Souls has flat out and lined out. Oh. All in one. Swinburnson's come right in and right after. Fastball right there by the right hander. One of the things that helped Bailey on that foul ball is the fact he was in front of his own dugout as opposed to the uh, enemy's dead. Good yeah. point. Sometimes you don't get a lot of help over there when it's in front of the enemy's territory. Outside corner, it's all in two. 17 and two thirds innings. 18 hits and just eight earned runs. Swin Burnson. Only a sophomore though, Rich. Out of Blaine, Washington. Right. right on the border. Malley's still at second. One and two the count. Yeah, this Swinburnson, if his brother's anywhere near the size of, of Tyler, I'll bet the old food bill at home decreased drastically when the kids went off to college. Swing and a miss. Tyler Swinburnson comes in and strikes out Ryan Souls. And a nice job out of the bullpen. So Stosh Jackson gives up just one earned, unearned run. As we head to the eighth, the Beavers trail the Huskies 1-0. With Dave Haverlow and Eric Radovich, I'm Rich Waltz as we head to the top of the eighth inning. One nothing. Washington on top of Oregon State. Sean Spencer will face the top of the Beaver order. Scott Harden, Alan Snelling, and Kevin Hooker. As Washington tries to win their fifth straight and give Oregon State their sixth consecutive loss. Center fielder, Buddy Buck has arrived. He's in right field. All right. And he will come into Tim Bishop's spot in the order. John Vandegreen moves from right to first base. Spencer throws a fast ball for ball one. I'm a little surprised we didn't see Buddy Buck come to the plate in Bishop's spot in the batting order when the right hander came into pitch. Buck is a switch hitter. Could have batted from the left side against the right hander, but they left uh, the right handed batting Bishop in there. He fouled out to the first baseman. 
The 2-0 to Harden is down low, and all of a sudden, Sean Spencer, who had a pair of strikeouts and a walk in the seventh, having trouble finding the plate here. Seven strikeouts, one walk on the ball game. It's high, and he walks the leadoff man. Well, that's not exactly what you want to see if you're a Husky fan. And now there's activity, of course, down there in that Husky bullpen. Surprise, surprise. I think that's number 17, isn't it? Mr. Merrick. Amazing how those relief pitchers just happen to find a baseball. Snelling pops up the bunt, and Malley makes the catch. In, good. in talking to Pat Casey, the first year coach at Oregon State, one area that has really bothered him is executing in the clutch. The Beavers were unable to bunt a runner over yesterday, and here in the eighth, unable to do it. And it's execution. And I'll tell you, if that ball falls to the ground, they turn an easy double play because Snelling didn't even break out of the batter's box. Harden away from first. He has five stolen bases this year. Kevin Hooker is the batter. He's one for three in the ball game. He's flat out, struck out, and double. Rich and Eric, I had a chance to look down at Pat Casey in the third base coaching box on that bunt attempt. And he just hung his head as the left hander filed, filed, fires a fastball. Poor Pat Casey down here, just beside himself. He's going through the signs now. They got to try to make something happen right here. I don't think you can wait for a big blast. That bunt attempt just uh, showing the way things are going for Oregon yep. State here lately. They've, they've had some of that bad baseball luck, if you will. One earned run beats them yesterday. And they give up an unearned run here and are trailing by one and can't get a bunt down to move a runner into scoring position as we're in the eighth inning. I'll tell you one thing, you, you talked about waiting for the big hit. The Beavers have not had their leadoff guys on board. In fact, Harden is only the second leadoff batter to get on base in the ball game. Good play by Malley to keep it in front. Way back in the second inning, you look there as Pat Myers that led the second inning off with a single. And other than that, it's been a drought by Oregon State getting that leadoff man on. John Spencer working on a five hit shutout here in the eighth. Myrick continues to throw down there in the bullpen. Merrick. Myrick is getting to play ball with Merrick down there throwing for the Huskies. The 1 1 pitch. Fouled off. It's 1 and 2. At Myrick is on deck. I think if Kent Knudsen has things his way, Spencer will get through the eighth inning here and we'll see Merrick for the night. 30 saves in Pac 10 career record. And as you mentioned, he's got three saves already this week. Throw to first. And back in is Scott Harden. Well, if the Beavers are ever going to run, here's, your, here's the time that they will. Harden leads the club with five stolen bases. Spencer does have a very good move, though. He's running. Fastball, ground ball to the shortstop. It'll keep him out of the double play. Two outs. Good jump by Harden. Boy, it was an outstanding jump over there by Harden. The left hander Spencer elected to go to the plate. Shortstop for the Huskies comes over and makes a nice play, but aggressive baseball by Pat Casey there. He just kicked <laughs> some kicks and grass saying, why couldn't that ball been hit in the hole? Now Myus. Oregon State has left four runners in scoring position in the ball game. Iowa's is one for three. Harden's at second with two outs, and it's two and zero. Oh. It's the first threat by Oregon State since way back in the third inning. They left runners on in second and third. And they left runners at second and third in the second as well. Harden at second with two down. Took something off the fastball and it's two and one. Again, another straight changeup by Spencer. 
I'll tell you, he's really done a good job of mixing his pitches up. As you see Pat Casey down there reminding the runner down a second there are two outs, you're off on the crack of the bat. 2 1 pitch, there is the crack of the bat. Fly ball, Joe Trippy is there, and he makes the catch. And the Beavers again leave another runner in scoring position. And the eighth, no runs, no hits, one man left. To the bottom of the eighth, one nothing Huskies. A run on four hits, no errors for Washington, no runs, five hits, and two errors for Oregon State. As we hit the bottom of the eighth inning, Tyler Swinburnson in relief of Stosh Jackson. An impressive Stosh Jackson. Swinburnson looked pretty darn good himself, though, in the bottom of the seventh. He got a ground out, or actually a pop out and a strikeout. He'll face Chris Whitemarsh, Joe Trippi, and Craig Holmes. 9 1 2 in the Washington order. White Marsh came in at 248. White Marsh trying to get a jump on things. He's up there swinging at that very first pitch by the big right hander, Swinburnson. Fouls it off. You're going to hear a lot about this kid right here, White Marsh, before his Polina days were over with two guys. As I mentioned, he is the future shortstop for the Huskies. Oh, one pitch is a breaking ball for a strike to toe and two. He hasn't made an error in about a month. Yeah, He's since done. he moved to second base, he has really shored things up defensively and seems to have a lot more confidence there. Breaking ball outside. Tell you what, though, that in itself speaks for the kind of coach that Kenny Knudsen is to recognize that. You know, early in the season, early in the season, the coaches have to shuffle your players around. You're not sure exactly what pieces of the puzzle are going to fit where. I got you. Don't worry about it, Eric. Stays in one and two. Ball gets close. I'll protect you guys. That ball was coming straight back here. Scud missile honing in right on my shaved coconut boy. You got to remember the last game we did. I yeah. got hit by a baseball at uh, some juncture there. Yeah. That was crazy. This guy right here is a guy I'll protect. <laughs> Thank Show you, David. Show Matt Bruce. Show Matt Bruce Thank on the you, leg David. last one. <laughs> one, two pitch. It's a strike. And White Marsh goes down looking. Tyler Swinburnson with his second strikeout. Good slider right there, boy. By the big right hander, Swinburnson. And just froze White Marsh. There again, you see that home plate umpire Phil Jordan today. He's been a pitcher's friend today, I think, uh, calling a lot of low strikes and stuff uh, on the outside part of the plate. Been a very consistent job. Joe Tripp, he's 0 for 2. That's the way I like to see the game call. You know Derwood Merrill, but. Well, Derwood was here last time we were here. <laughs> The 0 1. I forgot about that. One ball, one strike. Yeah, if Deerwood was here, he wouldn't let you forget about it. He probably got some country gig going on somewhere. Well, he's not umpiring, I know that. Yeah, he got some free time. Probably in Nashville. One out here in the bottom of the eighth, the 1 0 Washington lead. Joe Trippy, the top of the Washington order. And it's two and one. If you're looking towards the Oregon State nine, Matt Bailey, Mark Malloy, and Chris Wakeland, five, six, seven in the order. The two one is down low, and it's three and one. On deck, and this was something we talked about. Sean Spencer is on deck. We talked about this during the break. Craig Holmes, the DH, was in that slot as Trippy takes ball four. Spencer against right-handed pitching will hit when he pitches. But with the left-hander Stosh Jackson going today, Spencer sat in the uh, dugout, and Craig Holmes was the DH. But with Swinburnson coming in, Ken Knudsen will bring up Sean Spencer. And by bringing up the left-hander here, then that gives Trippy over there at first base a pretty good lead over there because that will 
take away the vision by the catcher. Now Pat Casey from Oregon State's going to trot out to the mound. And let's see what's going to happen if we're going to make a change here. But I've got to believe that again, Kenny Knutson has the table set here, even with one out. He's going to want to have Trippy try to steal himself a, a second, maybe a third out there, try to get another insurance run. He does have a left hander, uh, 13 Brody Purcell out there warming up, another freshman from Portland. Well, the, the concerns are twofold, Dave, and you bring up the point. You, as Purcell will come in, maybe a lefty to face the left handed hitter, or maybe a left hander to keep the runner closer at first. We'll find out. Tyler Swinburnson's afternoon is finished, and Sean Spencer will face a left hander when we get back. There's your score. It's a one nothing ball game as we are in the bottom of the eighth inning. The wheels are turning in both dugouts. Brody Purcell the left hander with a minuscule one point nine three ERA comes out of the Oregon State bullpen to face Sean Spencer. Pat Casey did not want Spencer who has seven home runs this year to face the right hander Tyler Swinburne. Ken Knudsen wanted Spencer's bat despite the fact that Spencer is working on a five hit shutout and in all likelihood will come out and pitch in the ninth inning. All right gentlemen I turn this over to you now is Purcell on to face Spencer or is he on to keep Trippy closer at first base or maybe a combination a combination of both. Well, I think uh, realistically it's here to work on Spencer the left handed batter I think Trippy's very tough to hold on regardless lefty or righty out there on the hill he's proven he could steal off both this year. I think Trippy uh, not, not to skirt the question here but I think Trippy's job right here is to try to distract the pitcher Purcell and get him focusing on me over here at first base and maybe hang one to the hitter up here. Well he goes over right away. I don't think that was his best move. I hope not. Spencer at 292. The seven homers, 23 RBIs, have come in just 113 at bats. Long wait by Purcell. Too long for Spencer, who calls for timeout. This is a big run for the Huskies, trying to pick up an insurance run going to the ninth inning. The Beaver infield looks for a ground ball. There's one out. Ooh, Trippy was leaning. Brody Purcell, only a freshman out of Beaverton High School down in the Portland area. 6'2, 180 pound freshman. Right. Hit hard in the right field base hit. Charging the ball is Malloy. Trippy on his way to third. He'll get there easily. And the Husky Club runners in first and third. And another left handed bat and a real good one. John Vandegree coming to the plate. Well, I'll tell you, I was watching Trippy over there at first, and when that ball was hit, as he was nearing second base, he just went hard. Look at this right here. As the ball gets by the second baseman hooker out there, right fielder charging, but Trippy never broke stride and easily reaches third. So good clutch hitting right there in support of his own effort by Spencer. And how about Spencer pitching eight innings and then uh, out of nowhere coming to the plate, moving a runner from first to third. And now another reason Purcell came in to face Spencer, another left-handed hitter right behind him, John Vandegrain. Middle infield looks for two. The corners are in. And Purcell misses outside. It's one and all. Vandegrain had no luck against Stosh Jackson. Well, virtually anything that John can do to get the ball to the outfield is gonna most likely push across the second run of this ball game. One out. Chopped over the middle, charging the second baseman Hooker. His only play is the first. It'll score a run, and Washington has a 2 0 lead. Andrew Green gets RBI number 38 on the season. Or a little chopper over the top of the head of the pitcher out there in the mound to push Trippy across. John doesn't hit this ball very well, but I'll tell you what, when the, when the afternoon is over with, it's going to be golden because it will push across the second run 
And the only play that Oregon State had was across the diamond for out number two. Pat Casey returns to the mound. Vandegree chasing Mike Kincaid for the lead in the Pac-10 North in RBIs. Now with 38 on the season. And Pat Casey's going to go to the bullpen. He wants a right-hander. So Brody Purcell with a very short stint. We'll be right back. It's 2 0 Washington. Still in the bottom of the eight. Washington with a 2 0 lead, and Pat Casey. Has gone to his bullpen for the third time. Eric Lovinger, a junior out of Portland, Beaverton High School, 6'3, 205. Big kid, and he'll face a big hitter. A cleanup man for Washington, Ross Junkin. I guess when Eric Lovinger isn't pitching, it has him listed here as a catcher. That's a big catcher at 6'3. Spencer's at second, one pitch, ground ball. And Lovinger gets the job done. But in the eighth, a very big insurance run. On one hit, no errors, a man left. We are going to the ninth inning. Washington trying to hold on to first place in the Pac-10 North. They lead Oregon State 2-0. It's a young Husky bullpen this year. 2 0 Washington on top of Oregon State. But as we look at that bullpen, it's important to note that Ken Knutson has not gone to the bullpen yet. There is Brett Merrick. He's still in the pen. And it's still Sean Spencer for hire out there. The left hander goes to work here in the ninth inning. There's Merrick, nine saves. The career save leader in Pac 10 history. There's Sean Spencer. Seven strikeouts and two walks. Remember, though, he just had a jaunt around the bases. Doesn't show much there, though, as the fastball is right on the mark. Bailey's 0 for 3. Spencer's out in front, 0 and 1. Bailey, Malloy, and Wakeland. 5, 6, 7 in the Oregon State order. Up and in, and it's one and one. Spencer may have helped himself uh, stay in this ball game with a chance for a complete game shutout with that single he had at the plate in the eighth inning, moving Trippy to third. And Trippy scoring on that infield ground out by Vandergrave. One, two pitches fouled back. Go, you bailed! One ball, two strikes. Check swing. Did he go? No. First base umpire, Walt Palmer. Said no swing. So Matt Bailey is still alive. Two and two. Here's the pitch. Foul back. Heads up, JR. Top of the ninth inning. A win would put the Huskies. At 12 and 6. Breaking ball down low. 3 and 2. And Eric, it, it might increase their lead in the North because last we heard Portland State getting bombed by Washington State 8 1. I think that's a good thing if you're a Husky fan, as the ball has popped up on the infield here. Van de Green will call for it and make the catch. Good in that uh, Washington has the opportunity to play the Cougars three more times and those games will be here at Graves Field and their season is completed against Portland State. 
they opened the year with six games against Portland State, splitting three and three, and you always like to have the opportunity to beat that second place team as the season progresses. If the two scores hold, Washington State would be a game and a half behind the Huskies, and Portland State would fall two back. That's a big out right there by the Huskies getting that first out. Only two to nothing lead. That's a big one right there. That takes a lot of the weapons away from Pat Casey if he can get some men on. Mark Malloy. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Malloy hit probably the, the best ball against Spencer when he lined out in the seventh inning. Pretty good sharp breaking ball in the outside corner by Spencer. The 0 oh 2. Hello, it's one and two. Pinch hitter on deck. Aaron Knotts is swinging a bat. Spencer kind of lost his footing on the follow through on that last pitch that sailed on him. That was pitch number 103. There's a shot to left field. That's well hit. Louts is going back and he makes the catch. And so Mark Malloy is hit two shots. His last two times up doesn't have a thing to show for it. And Sean Spencer is one out away from a five hit shutout. And his second complete game of the season. Eric, on a normal day, that ball's probably out of here, isn't it? But the wind has been blowing from left to right. And you saw Locks right there have to reach back. The wind really knocked that ball down for out number two. The wind's been blowing that way all weekend, Dave, from left to right. And I think that's taken some of the punch out of these Oregon State bats, no question about it. This is Aaron Knotts. And his job, should he choose to accept it, is just get on base. Oregon State down to their final out. It's a two nothing ball game. Ryan Light scheduled to hit next. And it's one and one. Boy, you think that guy right there not pumped up. Strike two, a changeup. One ball, two strikes. Sean Spencer. The sophomore out of Port Orchard, Washington. Here's the one, two. Should Popped do it. him up, and it's Spencer who will make the throw. The ball game is over. A big hug from Sean Malley. And the left hander out of Port Orchard has kept Washington in first place. A big week for the Huskies. They sweep a three game set with Oregon State. Washington has won five in a row. And the Huskies hold on to first place. We'll be back to Graves Field after this timeout. There's your final Washington a 2 nothing shutout over Oregon State Sean Spencer with the shutout he's now five and two Stosh Jackson pitched very very well he deserved a better fate the run he gave up was unearned second complete game of the season for Sean Spencer and Ken Knudsen's Huskies have won five in a row they hold on to first place they're now 12 and six in the conference the Beavers fall to six and eleven the Beavers have dropped Six straight. All right, first to you, Eric Radovich. Tell me about Washington. They have to feel extremely well about this week, not only holding on to first base, a first place, but uh, winning five in a row. They've got it going towards the end of the year. Well, they're doing it with pitching and defense. They've got Derek Carpenter back in the rotation from an injury, a left hander in Jake Kringen that's pitching very well. Spencer with a complete game uh, win today. Pitching's been great. Vandergreen made a couple nice plays in the outfield and errorless baseball today by the Huskies. Dave Haverlow, the Huskies happy, but for Oregon State, they've got to find something to pull themselves out of it. They've dropped six in a row. Maybe the performance by Stosh Jackson is something they can build on. I don't think there's any question about it. It's going to be kind of a long trip back for Oregon State and Case, Coach Casey, but I'll tell you what, if there's a bright spot to come out of this sweep by Washington is the fact that Stosh Jackson came out and threw extremely well, and he's gotten the attention not only of these Husky players today, but the rest of the folks around Pac-10 that follow Pac-10 baseball with this outing, a very strong and impressive outing by who? Stosh Jackson. The final score, a well-pitched ball game, and Washington stays red hot. They've won five in a row. They stay in first place. And the Pac-10 North, the Huskies beat the Beavers 2-0.
For my producer, Steve Woodruff, for Eric Radovich and Dave Haverlow, I'm Rich Waltz. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye from Seattle.